Today I'm going to talk about reliability, why we're, why we're doing all of this. Um, the last few videos have been kind of deep technically and things like that. And I realized that I hadn't really made a video that's like, why are we doing all of this? So um, a little over a year ago, Linus Tech Tips tried Linux and um, got into a Debian packaging situation and broke their computer. And naturally as a supporting, welcoming community, the Linux folks just kind of, we all kind of just helped them out, you know, to, to figure out his problem. No, just kidding. Everyone just flamed the guy and blamed him, right? Because why would you expect a YouTuber not to be a Debian system administrator? Um, but I think those of us that work on, or have worked on distributions or are working in distributions or in the field, um, or work in open source, maybe, um, you know, it was just, it was just their turn. Right. Um, and I think we're starting to see a lot of organizations are starting to get it now. Like Pop OS, uh, I found a repo. They're working on an immutable base thing, right? OpenSUSE has obviously been doing this for a while. Fedora has been doing this for a while. So I think, you know, the whole, I think people are starting to get it now. So what happened when the Linus Tech Tips thing happened is I had been participating in Ubuntu for a long time. So I went through Ask Ubuntu's data because we have access to the data, um, because I spent a long, long time and a lot of hours uh, helping users out on Ask Ubuntu, right? So I knew, I, I kind of knew what problems users typically run into. And I went, I analyzed all the data because it gave us a SQL dump. And I had a friend help me out. And I remember tweeting this, what's the date on this? November 9th, 2021. I just went and ran a query on 11 years of Ask Ubuntu data. Then I sorted by the amount of views and um, looked at the top 200 questions, right? And I, it was actually a typo. There were 30, I went and found all the questions that had anything to do with reliability, package updates, all that stuff. And disturbingly, 30 million views on those questions had to do with some kind of failure where the distribution had failed them, right? So that's a lot. Um, so, you know, that's kind of why we have to move to a more reliable um way for us to consume our Linux distributions, right? Because you kind of can't fix this. You have to rethink about the model. So today I'm just going to give you some examples on why the model of booting off of an image, um, like how, how I'm currently doing is more reliable for the end user, uh, that's using a traditional Linux distribution. So I'm going to give you a few examples today. Uh, first we're going to have Paris. We're going to pretend it's 2018 because numbers, numbers are good. Um, she, she's going to start on Ubuntu 18.04. Alan is, of course, going to be on Kubuntu 18.04. Then we have George, old George, who is on Ubuntu 18.04. Okay, so we have three people. It's 2018, you're using, you're doing the Linux thing, you're installing packages, whatnot, right? Um, so Alan's gonna install some KDE apps. Paris has certain uh, tastes, so she's gonna no maps, some electron apps, pro probably. Everyone kind of needs them, whether you like it or not. Um, and traditionally, Linux distributions, what are you using? You're using the package manager, you're installing uh, these packages, right? Inevitably, one of them is going to need a PPA because that's just the way it works. Because remember, it's 2018. Um, Alan, however, has been around the block before. He knows he doesn't want to use PPAs. Um, so he might use a PPA for just a little bit. Old George has been around the block and been hanging out with engineers. So he knows the only way to get a reliable, by now, George knows the only way to get a reliable computer is to only use main turn off universe. Because I know that I'm going to be upgrading in six months or two years or whatever it is. So this was a trick we would do. Always try not to install stuff so that upgrades work better. There's a reason that Ubuntu only supports main and not the entire package set. Because if you install the entire package set and then you did a dist upgrade, no one will want to support that, right? Um, 
Some people do want it though, which is why recently they said, Hey, look, if you want support for that for 10 years, it's going to cost you because obviously engineering, engineering work has to be paid for, you know? Um, then what happens? Well, it's time to move to 2004. Alan is a fan of Kubuntu. So he's trying all the good bits. And then he eventually gets to 2004. George, only LTS upgrades, because I know better. Right? Now, the chances of an upgrade failing when you add a PPA totally depends, right? If you're adding a PPA that replaces system components, that's obviously going to be more complicated than a text editor, right? The problem with the way traditional packaging works is you can't go back. That is the one thing I want you to remember. You can't go back. So Paris upgraded from 1804 to 2004. And unfortunately in 2004, there's a bug in the new kernel or something, but she's on 2004 now and her Wi-Fi card doesn't work as well as it did in 1804. This could be an app. This could be whatever. Something that you care about is now broken when you've done an upgrade. The only way for Paris to get her working computer back is to either restore from backup or do a reinstall. That is the only problem that we're trying to solve. Basically, Like if you think about it, um, you know, if we could fix that problem, then kind of everything fixes itself, right? Additionally, let's say we have another Alan. We have Alan's kid, let's say. However, Alan doesn't want to be a system administrator. So on their laptop, they only do LTS is only, right? How much do you think 2004 on Alan's computer is going to look like his kid's computer, right? Now think about that for every single person that's running that distribution, right? You're adding a PPA, you're removing stuff, you're leaving stuff behind, right? Um, you're doing upgrade from distribution to distribution to distribution, and you get to 2004. The next person just did LTS only upgrades, right? Those two systems don't look the same. You know, that's the entropy that I'm talking about. That's what happens is when you have a system that's lived in for a while, things change and, you know, uh, you set a thing and you forgot it, right? And then it asks you when you do an upgrade, hey, I found a conflicting file. Do you want me to keep it? Do you want to use the old version? Do you want to use the maintainer's version? How many people know how to actually answer those questions? So you just hit the thing, right? And then you end up with, you know, one person that wants to go back and can't, right? You have two people that are on 2004. However, you can't really guarantee the upgrade path on these, right? And the fact that they're not the same is really strange. If you're running Kubuntu 2004, you should have Kubuntu 2004. Now, if you've been around for a while, you've seen this before, right? Like you tried to install KDE on, on your GNOME and then, you know, you end up with what we call Frank and Debian's, right? Where it's like, oh, I have the icons from, from this thing and this thing. Why? Because you're all conflating it all in the image, right? The only person that might be safe here is George. Like old George, I just ran uh, things in main and, and I tried to keep my system as stock as possible because upgrades were, were painful for me. Um, that's not a fun way to use your computer though. Like, you know how much it sucked to go onto OMG Ubuntu, read about something that's really amazing. And then at the bottom, you see the instructions for a PPA, knowing that a certain percentage of users are going to have broken upgrades. That sucks. I don't want to live. I don't want to live in that life. Um, so that's the problem that these systems are trying to solve. Now let's talk about how George does it now. George gets an image. And what happens is we still have our distribution is going to deliver the OS, right? That's the, um, the build systems and all the stuff that Fedora users or whatever. And then they're going to output a container image. 
And this is going to go in a registry, which is just a web service that holds container images. Every single day, a computer, not in this house, replicates these steps. So if you've ever had a, a standard distribution, and you're like, man, things aren't running right or whatever, and you do a clean reinstall and you get that fresh feeling. You know what I'm saying? Like, we are doing that every single day. The difference is this is not on my computer. This is a CI system. In my case, it's GitHub that is doing this, right? So every single day it's saying, take what Fedora has today, right? And I want you to make an image out of it. And then you're going to send it to George's computers. And every day my computers update and then they get that image. So that means that every single day and you can go whatever your cadence is i'm going every day i am booting into a fresh operating system there is no upgrade you know um, now technically underneath yeah when you're doing the update it's pulling layers down and, 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 and you know you are changing things on your disk right but what you're not doing is the math to figure out what packages are supposed to be on there because that happened earlier in the process. And if there's a failure up here, right? Let's say um, I did need something. So I added a copper, which is a PPA for uh, Fedora systems, right? Or I can add any customizations here. When I do this in a traditional distro, I'm doing that on the client. I'm typing, you know, apt add repository or zipper add, or whatever copper thing you're adding, whatever distro, you know, third party repo, or you're installing stuff and you're installing all of that locally. And your local computer is trying to figure out how to make that your package system is trying to figure out how to make that all line up, you know, in a way that doesn't get you any errors. So what we're doing with this system is removing that complexity from the client. That's your laptop. And we're going to have a server do it. Okay. If, Everything passes, you generate an image, and then your clients just boot off the image. They don't have to do any hard thinking, and we remove a lot of the complexity that would happen if each client had to figure that out. If we had 100 laptops, right? I showed you three, the example of three people, right? Pretend you have 100 laptops, and you want to get them from 1804 to 2004, whatever life cycle thing that you're into. By the time you get to the end, how many of those 100 people are going to be, you know, at, at have the upgraded thing that they're supposed to have? How many are going to be failures? Well, as we have seen here, it's definitely more than, um, it's definitely an amount, right? Um, however, if all those laptops had to do is boot off an image and we know the image works, right? We remove a lot of the complexity of having the laptops have to do it, right? So if you have those hundred people, one person added a different PPA than the other person, or uh, they added a third party repo that didn't get updated for the latest version of that distribution, right? So that breaks and, you know, by the time you get to the end, you've got, you've got that mangled mess, right? And that's what we're trying to avoid. So the way we do this is we just make the clients be as dumb as possible. I don't even add coppers or anything like that to my silver blue systems because I want to be on that image, right? I don't want, if I were just to take silver blue and layer a bunch of things, that's just PPAs all over again. I do get the rollback, which is really nice. And for a lot of people, that's enough, right? Um, but for me, if, if you think about it is you're just booting off the image and that's generally a lot simpler for the client to do than it is, um, you know, to try to sit there and figure out. And it also removes a bunch of things that I, I haven't seen. So, you know, when you're, when your friends are upgrading their computers, maybe they're doing a disk upgrade or the windows thing. I haven't seen even traditional Fedora does this. I haven't seen an operating system upgrade screen in two years. Um, <laughs> Because all of that is just done for me and all my machines do is boot off the latest image. So um, that's really the model that I think is attractive to people. It's definitely attractive to me because, hey, first of all, I automatically have 90 days 
of image backups, right? Because that's that's what GitHub gives me. I can boot into any one of my da daily snapshots. You know, my computer was working perfectly on Friday, right? So I could boot. You know, if if, if I got a bad kernel that day, or you know something bad, or there's a weird bug, I can always rebase to that specific day, right? Flat packs are a little different. Uh, there was a recent bug where you launched a flat pack app and the fonts were busted, right? So you had to roll back the flat pack layer for those apps it, and you know and but that was independent of the system so that's neat clearly there's work to do here ux wise user experience wise right like wouldn't it be great if it was just a slider right or a little date widget that told me you know there's there's a lot of great tooling that needs to happen because right now we're just typing rebase commands in the terminal right that's not going to fly for users either right um because as far as they're concerned if they got to open the thing that sucks right um so I, I, I wanted to kind of talk about this a little bit, talk through the thought process of why we want to move to this model, because um, the idea of just making a change on your, on your local system is kind of foreign to me now. And on the customization thing, I think the thing that makes it really great is you can insert any customization that you want into this process. A lot of people just don't know how to do that. I don't know how to do that. That's why we're kind of figuring this out because the technology is new, right? So we are trying to figure out best practices, what to do. Um, I read a comment on Reddit. Someone was like, I don't like these systems. I like to sit there and watch packages build and do all this stuff. And, you know, I like to see stuff scroll by too. And I'm doing that. I'm just doing it in a web browser, watching my builds on a remote computer. And then if my customizations are legit and don't break anything, then the next day my computers just get them, right? So it's kind of a different different method of doing that, but just ensuring that the client always gets a working image, which is awesome. So that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. I hope this has helped. Um, and if not, feel free to just ask questions below. And uh, happy, I don't know, happy immutabling? I don't know, is that a word? <laughs> take, a, take care, everyone.